Ladies and gentlemen on this Red Gaming Telecom video, we're going to be discussing Mantle and is it really needed for the future of PC gaming? We're also going to be throwing in multiple other APIs into this discussion as well, including, of course, Microsoft's beloved DirectX, as well as things such as OpenGL. So, Mantle has received quite a lot of limelight in the gaming community recently, particularly amongst developers. Um, and John Carmack um, and others have started to weigh in on Mantle, and they've started to give their thoughts and insights into it. And it's actually a very complicated subject. Now, obviously, not all of the information regarding Mantle has been so far unveiled. But what we do know is that start that we're starting to understand more and more and more and more and more um, of the thoughts and opinions behind it. Graham Sellers works for AMD. He's one of their top guys, and he has been on Twitter, and he said that um, we will expose all the hardware as hashtag OpenGL extensions with the highest possible performance. In other words, it's going to be an extension of OpenGL. And he also added, my mission is to expose GPU as OpenGL extensions. If you can't get close to the theoretical peak performance, I failed. He also added onto this, I'm saying that for modern OpenGL applications, API will not be the bottleneck. You'll hit the hardware limits first. So, in other words, he's saying that the API, the draw calls, everything else that we've discussed is not going to be the problem. He's saying that you're actually going to run into a limit simply because the GPU is not fast enough to process any more frames of animation. And so John Carmack has also been taking to Twitter, as you would expect, and someone asked him, um, what do you think of Mantle's API claimed nine times more draw calls? 2018 like hardware today is it realistic very simple question and john responded nine times draw calls is a credible overstock of direct 3d but nvidia opengl extensions can give similar improvements and this is basically true there is a growing movement of dissatisfaction in the PC gaming space, and it's pretty much all aimed at the same thing. Microsoft, Windows, and the rather ambiguous way that hardware has grown. I think that this has been a symptom of the fact that back in the days of early PC gaming, it was just a, it was a nightmare, basically, to get games working. You would have to worry, for example, about ports on sound cards. You'd have to worry about, you know, um, are you addressing the wrong IRQ, that type of thing. Basically, memory uh, configuration issues and much more that was just nightmarish. And it's basically been pushed more and more back. Um, but today, a modern-day Jeep and modern-day console, generally speaking, can actually put more draw calls out than the average PC. Now, a draw call... Um, isn't actually a big deal if you've got a lot of objects on the scene that look very similar or the same object. So think of it this way. Let's say that you have a cup on a table and that cup is exactly the same as another cup. That's not another draw call. But let's assume that you need to make two different cups. Let's say one cup is slightly damaged, it's got a chip in it, and has like, you know, um, Donald, Donald Duck's face on it, just for example. Let's just make something silly up. And the other one is just a regular, plain, boring, white cup. Well, what happens is then it's two draw calls. And obviously, I'm oversimplifying this a little bit, but when you start imagining forests or environments with a hell of a lot of... Um, what would be the best way to describe it? Diversity. Um, you can imagine just how much workloads. We're talking, you know, hundreds of workloads, thousands of workloads and more. So there was an actual developer and they ran a test on a fairly mediocre now machine. Or this is a couple of years back. Um, back when DX11 first started to be popped into um, the forefront. 
And basically, they had it where the GPU itself wasn't maximizing um, its performance. It was actually the CPU that's holding it back because of the draw calls. So what they did is they did a fairly simple test. They had 30,000 different cubes on screen with one draw call per cube. And they had Xbox 360 and the PlayStation 3 run the test. And in concurrent mode at 60 frames a second or 16.6 milliseconds um, per frame. The PC was used was a 4-core, 8-thread, 3.2 gigahertz Xenon with 6 gigs of RAM. And a an NVIDIA GeForce 470 GTX. So not exactly the highest end system, but still... And they found that they were getting exactly half the frame rate, 30 frames per second. And they actually found that the concurrent version was running at 5 milliseconds frames slower than the single threaded version. And then basically what they had to do is reduce the thread count by 1 to let the GPU actually have an entire core to work with. Um, and well, there you go. That's just a demonstration of how crap basically direct x's draw call management is and they're trying to improve it but it's not easy because of the nature of it opengl now is starting to become a lot more powerful opengl plus um mantle which is an extension of opengl that's cleared up it's going to be very powerful in my personal opinion and my thoughts and opinions on this are that it's going to be very, very important for the next um, versions of PCs, but also for most likely the possibility of an OpenGL future for PC gaming. Um, especially if Gabe Newell has his way. Now, Gabe, obviously, the the... Uh, president and ruler of Valve uh, is pushing for a Linux future because of issues like this. Because of issues where he knows that Windows, the stack of Windows, is becoming a lot thicker than what it should be. Um, now remember, the Xbox One, the PlayStation 4 and so on are going to have, just like the Xbox 360, the PlayStation 3 are going to have very thin abstraction layers. So on the PC, you have the application, in other words, the game or whatever you're running, which speaks directly, communicates with DirectX, whichever version it's addressing, whether it's 9, and God help you if it's 9, because 9 um, is even less optimized with draw calls than 10 or 11. Then it speaks directly to the driver, and then eventually it gets hold of the hardware itself. Now remember, Mark Cerny, who is the architect for the PlayStation 4, he was told that he wanted a powerful, they, the developers wanted a powerful GPU, a CPU that was capable of multi thread rendering. In other words, it was capable of issuing multiple draw calls and all the other good stuff, and of course, unified memory. So, yes, DirectX 11 and versions of it, like 11.2 and so on, are making efforts and concerted improvements to multi-thread rendering, but the high abstraction layer and so on is still very confusing. I think that it's honestly a time where people, developers, games developers, are starting to realize that the hardware is incredibly powerful, but the reality of the matter is you can't get much more out of it. Um, CPUs for a while have kind of, well, we're hitting the Moore's Law era. Uh, we're hitting the era, the era where Moore's Law is starting to break down. And obviously there are technologies on the horizon which could possibly help with that. But right now it's not just a megahertz race. PCs have, PCs have always been like the, the really powerful um, alternative. And sure, you could buy a super high-end CPU to just kind of battle through it, but it's still not efficient. And inefficiency is a problem. Now, obviously, if you buy a mid to high-end PC, it's probably going to look better or at least as good as the next-generation titles, uh, next-generation consoles. If you buy a um, 
you know, a reasonably high-end GPU, you're probably going to be able to play the game at a higher resolution, you're going to have higher texture quality, fine. Um, that's okay and that's understood. But still, we could move further forward. We could have even more of a... Of a, of a I don't want to say advantage because that's not exactly the right word, but um, a technological um, movement. We could be further pushing the boundaries. And remember that diversification in terms of game engines is pretty big. Um, you know, different particle effects, different um, different areas of grass, different trees, different buildings. All of this requires draw calls. All of this requires a huge thinking, a, a rethinking of how the technologies are put together. A decent, powerful API is going to be crucial for the next generation. I think that PC gaming, um, I wouldn't be surprised if we do start seeing a lot more uh, Linux-based gaming, especially if uh, Gabe has his way. Obviously, with the uh, Steam OS, which is being worked on as we speak, um, and that technology is going to be extremely powerful. Obviously, it's still very early yet because AMD, NVIDIA, um, Microsoft, Valve, um, and various other companies, they've all got their, their vision of PC gaming, which can be a bit dangerous. Um, at the same time, though, I think that I don't, I don't think that D DirectX is like this um, this monstrosity that needs to be put down, but I think that it needs to start being improved drastically. Microsoft, have, obviously, for a long time, they uh, they just kind of didn't do anything with it, right? They just kind of was like, eh, it's fine. And it took them ages to start to really update the DirectX versions compared to, you know, DirectX 6 and 7 and so on, which seem to have so much more progress. Um, recently, it's slowed down a lot, mostly because Microsoft were focusing so much on the Xbox but now the new OpenGL extensions, of course, you've got technologies like Mantle, which are starting to push forward. And it wouldn't surprise me if these new technologies do start making huge headway. John Carmack, of course, um, is hugely... Uh, he basically said, I mean, I was watching a uh, panel with him, and he just did this the other day, well, yesterday, and he said quite bluntly that he was tempted with... Mantle, he's, he's tempted by the, by the uh, the prospect of it, but he would probably resist the temptation to go more with what he believes is the the open and uh, easier to utilize technologies like OpenGL. And Carmack himself has been very much an advocate of OpenGL, and of course Gabe is as well, because ultimately they want a more open system. Um, I'm not quite sure where the future lies. I think that it's going to really depend on how AMD market this technology. NVIDIA obviously are trying to downplay Mantle. There is a large market share of NVIDIA uh, in terms of the GPU market. More people own NVIDIA GPUs than what they do um, AMD. As far as I'm aware, it's about a 2 to 1 ratio if you were to look on Steam. But... Obviously, things could change. You've also got to remember that AMD have managed to win two pretty important, three important contracts. The uh, Wii, or rather the Wii U, the Xbox One, and the PlayStation 4, as well as Xbox 360 and the original Wii, all powered by uh, AMD hardware GPUs. So, they've got a pretty big stake in it. But I just... I'm liking Mantle... And I'm liking the idea of what they can do with Bantle in terms of reducing draw calls and tr improving the performance and all the other good stuff that you'd expect. But I think it's still a bit early yet to, to call anything. And I think the next couple of years are going to be very pivotal. I'm extraordinarily curious on what developers are going to make of Valve's technology. What my personal hope is that it's going to be very easy, um, since obviously, and funnily enough, NVIDIA have been working, of course, to improve the extensions of OpenGL. They've also been working, uh, in addition with this, to try to 
improve Linux and create better uh, bug testing equipment or shall I say programs and of course Valve have been doing the same as well um, rather trying to improve the driver structure and so on um, it remains to be seen just how low level some of these accesses for OpenGL are going to be compared to uh, Mantle. I think we're going to have to wait until there's some proper testing being done. But anyway, it's extremely interesting. Um, one thing's for certain in my personal mind uh, that we're going to be seeing technologies over the next couple of years which are going to massively, drastically revolutionize gaming uh, for PCs. I think that we're going to be seeing technology. I mean, Look, the new the new graphics cards that are going to be released are going to be like five T flops plus, so it's it's just going to be madness. Um, to be honest with you, the level of performance that we're going to be seeing is just going to be crazy. Anyway, uh, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'm going to get going. S see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.